I'm going to just ask you one last question, one last question, which I've been asking myself and many other people for a long time, and I've never got uh, a, a very, you know, uh, a good answer, at least in my opinion. Um, why do you think the generation of young people like my age or 20 years old or, or younger have lost curiosity? Um, I actually uh, am uh, privileged, evidently, uh, of uh, meeting people who are not in that group. I have never met anybody who I couldn't start talking to and find things that he or she was extremely passionate and extremely curious about. Um, so I, I, I disagree with the fact that uh, um, uh, people in their 20s uh, lost uh, their, their curiosity. Um, they don't represent a mass of aggregate people that all subscribe to the same things and can be easily manipulated by advertising, by uh, preaching, or by a given single political movement, so they appear to the superficial observer as uh, a, a, a gray mass of unindifferentiated um, individuals, just as uh, when you spin um, a, a circle of many colored segments, it appears gray and you don't understand that there is a, there is a lot behind it. Uh, however, it is certainly true that uh, people who start their adult lives these days cannot rely on anybody else to be uh, a long-term reference. Uh, and the, the choices that they make can be successful in the short term, but they know, they have the perception and the realization that they cannot be successful in the long term, once again, because change will require them to adapt and to ask themselves the questions that they have been asking, what do I want to be when I grow up? And asking yourself that question when you are 15 is one thing, Asking yourself that question when you are 35 or 55 and you have been laid off and the skills that you had are not valuable anymore and you don't know how you are going to feed your family or pay your rent or mortgage, that is very, very, very hard. So what is being asked by everybody as an individual is, am I going to be able to cope? How am I going to be able and constantly reinvent myself? I will not be able to say, okay, I made it. I, I, I have been successful at a great degree or at a moderate degree, but I am now in a position and I know that this is something that I will be able to keep in order to be a reliable family member or a reliable member of society. And this is the uncertainty that uh, is, is a struggle for, for everybody, but not only for the young. It is a struggle for people who are 10 years from being a pensioner and they don't know how they will make it for the next 10 years because they have just lost their jobs. Um, so uh, it, is, it is one of the reasons why the, the next uh, 5, 10, 20 years are going to be very, very interesting because uh, not just uh, uh, the riots in, in London or the uh, revolutions in, uh, in the Arabic world, uh, but uh, everybody from China to the United States uh, uh, are going to, to ask uh, these uh, same questions. 
Uh, my very, very last question to end on a high note is, uh, so what should we expect from the next 10 years that will, you know, better our, our lives thanks to technology and everything we talked about till now? Um, I am uh, an optimist. There are people who are, who are pessimists. My friend Larry Lessig, for example, is, is uh, not proud, but objective about his uh, stance of being a pessimist. Uh, uh, I'm not necessarily more objective at all, uh, uh, maybe less, uh, but personally, I'm, I'm more inclined to be an optimist. Um, some of the problems that we see today are going to find or start to find solutions. Let me give you just uh, three examples. Uh, the efficiency of solar energy generation is ex increasing exponentially. Ten years from now, it will be possible to generate energy needs from solar sources in a distributed fashion uh, with low environmental impact uh, in a manner that will make all of us more self-reliant and, and more empowered. Environmental impacts in general are going to be minimized by many, many factors. Um, there will be a digitization of, of a lot of things uh, and more and more we will be able and refrain from producing unneeded physical objects. We will be able and use objects that we need and just as, um, I don't know, uh, uh, even um, middle-class families uh, or, or um, upper middle class families uh, in uh, the 19th century used to have domestics. And, and they would look at our families and say, oh my God, they have no domestics. Uh, how it can be, how they can live a civilized life without domestics? Well, guess what? We have our washing machines where we have our dishwashers and so on. Future families and future ways of life uh, will be less defined by what are our material possessions. At the same time, the opportunities for what we experience and what we experiment will explode widely. Um, traveling, participating in new communities, uh, belonging for one, two or five years to something strange in a different continent will be very, very common, and it will not represent losing your roots uh, like it would do when you would emigrate from Ireland or Italy to the US at the beginning, beginning of the 20th uh, century. And our entire cities are going to be ecologically more sound. Uh, horse manure was an enormous problem in London 150 years ago. Today it is not. Uh, car emissions today are a huge problem in many, many cities. And maybe not 10 years, but little more than 10 years, they will stop to be a problem through uh, robotic electric cars that will totally transform how we define uh, transportation. Um, so energy transportation and uh, how you organize your personal life, your material life and the, the, your, your experiences are going to very, very positively change in the next 10 years. David, this has been one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done. And I thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. I'm looking forward to 
seeing uh, uh, the video online and of course I will be also monitoring if there are comments and questions and I will be very glad to answer them in, in on your website. I'm very happy, I really, I, I really appreciate it and I would really love to be able to have another chat with you again, even if not recorded, you know, just to share a little bit of uh, knowledge. Of course, very good, we will do that. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much and have a nice day.